In an attempt to promote transparency, fairness and equity in the democratic process, President Cyril Ramaphosa has finally signed the political party funding bill into law. This has been part of a big debate around business and in some instances criminal interests funding political parties for their own interests and without the knowledge of the voters. With South Africa going into the elections in four months' time, a lot of fundraising is going to take place and has taken place in some instances and money alongside promises made by political parties will play an important role in persuading the voters. How so? Well, the propaganda machinery of advertising, rallies, party regalia and various other activities cost a lot of money and therefore a party with generous benefactors is likely to have an edge. The Busasa revelations at the State Capture Commission have made this an even urgent matter. To discuss this, I'm joined by public law professor at University of Cape Town. He's also author of the book, Make or Break, How the Next Three Years Will Shape South Africa Over the Next Three Decades, Richard Culland. I'm inviting you to join us as well with your comments and questions on Twitter, the hashtag Modise Network. Now, Prof, pleasure to have you with us. Welcome. Thank you very much, Tim. It's a great pleasure to talk to you, as always. And this law has been a long time in the making. Many NGOs have been lobbying and trying to get this to be made law in South Africa. And finally, it has been signed into law. But what makes it so significant? Well, Tim, I think you and I probably first <coughs> discussed this issue in the last century, literally. Yes, yes. Uh, in the 1990s, when uh -huh. the arms deal scandal broke out. And it was very clear then... And Andrew Feinstein, the ANC MP's uh, later allegations, confirmed this idea that there had been bribery behind the scenes in terms of some of the benefactors of that arms deal putting money into the ANC's coffers in order to seduce the ANC into turning a blind eye when the corrupt practice took place to give contracts in that arms deal. So the history of this matter goes back a long way. And of course it's not unique to South Africa, the, 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 the global picture is scarred with scandals that relate to secret, dodgy funding of political parties. It's a very major phenomenon. Some countries have taken the legislative route to prescribe transparency. South Africa finally has reached that conclusion after, as you, we've just discussed, a 20-year uh, campaign by many NGOs, including, of course, IDASA in the old days, and more recently, My Vote Counts. And the Constitutional Court has had its say on the matter, uh, and now, finally, the president has signed what I think is an excellent first-class piece of legislation into law. And, of course, there are different reasons why this had to be made into law, besides the specific case that you cite. Even from the voter point of view, why is it important that voters should know who the political party funders are? Well, he who pays the piper plays the tune. That is the sort of soundbite uh, way of looking at this, that... Those who fund an entity, uh, particularly if they do say at, at scale, substantially, are likely to exert influence over the approach of that party. And they may benefit it from it directly if that party then wins political power. So our argument, and I'm talking about from my days at Adasa, more recently at the Council for the Advancement of the South African Constitution, CASAC, our argument has always been for a modern democracy to function properly for people to make an informed choice when they go to the ballot box and vote. They need to know who's funding the party. They need to know if there are hidden, secret influence peddlers at work behind the scenes. Now, transparency is the very simple uh, prescription to that particular problem, to require political parties and, indeed, donors to disclose their identity when making uh, substantial uh, uh, donations. What this act does, now that it's become law, is require that donors with donations of more than 100,000 rand will have to disclose those donations and the political party will have to do the same. There is a unique, almost unprecedented and very, I think, significant approach taken in this uh, legislation by Parliament, which is to double account. So both the donor and the donee will have to both separately disclose when they make that kind of donation. And that's a kind of belt and braces approach, necessary, I think, uh, in the, uh, the current climate to uh, reassure the voter that what they are seeing is the truth. But how is this going to be managed and who is going to be, let's call it the referee of this? How would we know that we've been provided with uh, <coughs> true information here? 
Well, that's a very good question. And the monitoring and the implementation of this Act of Parliament is going to be a very important phase, in a sense. Uh, although it's been a long time in the writing, we're really only at the end of Chapter 1 of this uh, story now. The Act has been uh, passed. It's been signed into law by President Cyril Ramaphosa. There was some controversy over whether he would do so before the election. There was a bit of a delay on his part. Uh, and I have to say, Tim, that uh, some of my colleagues in civil society might not thank me for saying this, but uh, where I think he's got the balance right is to recognize that this law had to be passed, that he had to show personal commitment to it, which he's done now by signing it into law. But by delaying a little bit, he has ensured that the, the new system of regulation will not uh, kick in in effect until after this particular election. The law will only come into uh, force shortly before the election, so the new system of transparent governance that will require transparency and information disclosure around donations and will prescribe and regulate how political parties use, receive uh, uh, money um, will only really uh, take effect after this election. That's, that's, as far as I'm concerned, taking a very long view as I do of this matter, having been working in this subject for uh, more than 20 years, I think that's fine. This is a long-term project to protect South Africa's democracy from the corrosive power that secret donations can have. Does it mean that post-elections we will be able to go through the books and check who donated how much to whom? That's right. So uh, to come back to your previous question, the, the referee, so to speak, will be uh, the Independent Electoral Commission, the IEC. Uh, they have, I think, uh, understandably raised some concerns about having capacity to do this. They're allocated extra budget to manage two additional funds that will be created under this Act, one for public funding of political parties, the other for uh, private donations to a multi-party democracy fund. Uh, and we can perhaps come back to the details of those two funds uh, later. But the, the management of those funds and the oversight and enforcement of the rules will be the IEC's uh, responsibility. They, of course, are, are very much focused at present on running another smooth, free and fair election. And so I think it's not unreasonable that they should have a bit of a run-in to allow them to develop, the, to develop the systems necessary to do that properly. And that will only take place after the election. But in theory, Tim, you're quite right. From mid-year this year, uh, forever, for, in perpetuity, we should be able to, through this new system of regulation, inspect the books of political parties and see very clearly where they're getting substantial donations from um, and, and uh, who, is, who are the donors. And then we can uh, double-check that against whether those donors are, for example, receiving government contracts. And we can join the dots, to use that phrase that Praveen Gordhan made so uh, popular last year, to join the dots between potential acts of corrupt practice and the flow of money into politics. And that's really what this is all about. Now, not all political parties agreed to the formulation of this law, and they cite, for instance, the fact that some of the donors may stay away and not donate to them, particularly the smaller parties, because they fear that they may be penalized by the governing party at the time for not donating to them and rather preferring to give money to the opposition or smaller parties. What's your comment? Yes, it's, it's an, an age-old debate, and for a long time the uh, Democratic Alliance in particular has taken the view and argued that uh, such a disclosure regime will have a chilling effect upon uh, donations. They are concerned that people who give money at scale to the DA um, will be deterred from doing so because they uh, fear some retribution or they fear that they will lose out, for example, on getting government contracts. Um, first of all, I don't think that will happen in practice. Um, I think robust uh, companies that are um, supportive of democracy will say, well, uh, we can, um, uh, we're willing to invest in democracy. We're willing to put our money in supporting opposition parties regardless of the consequence. Secondly, as the new rule uh, becomes the norm, so the market, so to speak, will adjust. And I think the ANC has a, an important role to play here. I think it's incumbent upon them to ensure that there are no acts of retribution of any sort, small or great, against any donor uh, to any opposition uh, party. What's interesting, of course, is that the DA, in a sense, uh, was compelled to, to get with the, uh, with the party, so to speak, on this issue, because once the ANC uh, 
uh, 12 months ago or so, had decided that its position would change, that they were in favor now of transparency, having uh, rejected it for more than 20 years and having sided with the opposition around this matter. Once the ANC had, had, had switched and decided that enough was enough, uh, what with the, the Gupta scandal and all the rest of it, so the reformers in the ANC, including the president, said, no, it's time to reform and we are now on the side of transparency. Of course, the ANC deserves commendation for that. It's taken them a long time to get that to that point, but they finally have. The DA now has to recognize that that is the prevailing majority view, and I think they and their donors in due course will become perfectly accustomed to the new system. But now, Prof, tell me, why do we need private funding for political activities, like, you know, election campaigning of political parties? I'm wondering why are political parties not publicly funded and not rather than being funded by private interests? And in any event, how much money, if you know, is collected whenever the uh, political parties approach these private donors. How much does democracy cost, in other words? So, uh, to take your last question first, we don't know. Uh, we can guess, but we don't know because, quite obviously, until now, uh, the regime has been a laissez-faire one. It's been a completely unregulated uh, area of governance in South Africa, and I think to the great cost and danger of, of the integrity of the political party system and democracy more generally here. That now is going to be corrected. So we, we simply don't know the scale of private funding of political parties. We can guess because we can look and, and work out more or less the extent to which uh, parties are spending money. We can then subtract the amount that they get from public funding, which is uh, over 100 million rand a year. We can take those figures out and we can sort of do a rough calculation. So it's quite clear that certainly in election year, when the bigger political, spa, bigger political parties such as the ANC and the DA will spend two or three hundred million rand at least uh, on their campaigns, you can work out that they are getting donations in the scale of, of hundreds uh, of millions of pounds, uh, particularly in election years. But this is guesswork. And the important thing now is, from mid-year onwards, after this election, uh, for, for, for the future elections, we will have much clearer disclosure, much better understanding of who is donating and the influence that they may be exerting. We, we have to recognize that political parties are expensive to run, and campaigning in South Africa is, is expensive because it's a big country with a complex demography. So we want parties to be well-funded. Uh, they do, of course, Tim, as you rightly say, uh, to turn to the first part of your question, they do get public funding. The 1997 um, represented, uh, political part, Funding of Represented Political Parties Act created a regime for public funding. But now, for 20 years, it seems to me political parties have had their cake and eat it. They've had public funding from the taxpayer, but the taxpayer in return has not been able to see where the private funding was coming, up, c coming from sure. to top up that public funding. Well, that was clearly unfair on the voter. Professor Richard Callan is my guest, and we are discussing the new law that's going to call on political parties to make full disclosure of their benefactors. We'll continue our conversation, and we're also inviting you to talk to us on Twitter, hashtag the Network. Don't go away.